Hello everybody, my name is Alexander and I'm the medications lead for the Kernu Clinic. Welcome to today's YouTube video for the Medications Club, which is about ACE inhibitors. To first understand what ACE inhibitors do, we must first understand what hypertension is. Hypertension is essentially the medical terminology for high blood pressure. Blood pressure is the force of your blood pushing against the walls of your blood vessels. When this pressure is consistently high, it can cause damage to the vessels such as plaque buildup, which further increases the force experienced by the vessel walls. If not careful, aneurysms can form at these narrow points, eventually causing the vessels to rupture and leak. When it comes to the diagnosis of hypertension, the best practice is to monitor your high blood pressure at home by measuring it three times a week, with three readings each time. As the American Heart Association outlines, stage 1 hypertension begins when the systolic pressure, or the upper number, is between 130 and 139, and the diastolic pressure, or lower number, is between 80 and 89. While having stage 1 or 2 hypertension does not pose any immediate risk to the individual, they do put them at higher risk for development of future cardiovascular events, and should therefore be managed by medications and lifestyle changes. The risk factors for hypertension include those of out, those out of our control, such as age and genetics, but there are also various factors such as weight, physical activity, alcohol or tobacco use, high sodium intake which we can control by making appropriate lifestyle changes. So why should we care? Well, hypertension is an extremely prevalent disease. It affects roughly 1 in 4 Canadians, and the lifetime incidence of developing hypertension is estimated to be 90%. While it may seem harmless, hypertension can lead to a variety of problems including stroke, heart attack, heart failure, kidney disease, vision loss, and sexual dysfunction. In a meta-analysis study that compiled the results of 123 randomized control trials with over 600,000 patients, researchers looked at how one's blood pressure affected different health outcomes. They found that for every 10 milligrams of mercury reduction in systolic blood pressure, it reduced the risk of cardiovascular disease events by 20%, coronary heart disease by 17%, stroke by 27%, heart failure by 28%, and mortality by 13%. This all goes to show the importance of hypertension management in cardiovascular health, which brings us to a crucial class of blood pressure medications, ACE inhibitors. Now that we are equipped with a better understanding of what hypertension is, how do we treat and manage it? This introduces our main character for today and why you decide to click on this video, we have our ACE inhibitors. On the following slide, you'll see various names in the following format, with the bolded font depicting the drug name and the subscript as the trade name, also known as the name that you will see most frequently on the boxes of the colorful packaging. Additionally, we'll briefly go over some considerations at the end of each drug. Alright, here's some examples of different ACE inhibitors. Starting with Benazapril, also known as Lotensin, is available in the form of oral tablets in varying strengths. It should be taken once or twice a day, depending on instructions, and patients can take it with or without food. Moving on to Captopril, administration of Captopril should be taken at least an hour before meals and may be increased depending on the patient and instructions. Thirdly, we are moving on to Enalapril. When it comes to Enalapril, the absorption and metabolism of Enalapril is unaffected by food and oral intake is dependent on dosage as administered by the advising healthcare practitioner. Fourthly, we have Facinopril. Now for Facinopril, which has a long half-life, this means that it'll stay in your body for a long time. Taking this into account, it means that there are more opportunities for drug-drug interactions and side effects, so one might be need to be a little more careful when taking this one. Finally, we have Lisinopril. Lisinopril is our fifth common ACE inhibitor, which also has a long half-life, and so careful consideration of the dosage orally will be required when the patient is on Lisinopril. So as we can see, there are many types of common ACE inhibitors that are currently available on the market. These are all approved by the United States Food and Drug Administration and available in Canada, but this isn't it. There are many more types of ACE inhibitors available. Remember, if there are only three things you can take away from the last slide, it is that 1. There are many types of ACE inhibitors that are available, each of them with their different functions and half-lives. Number 2. You must pay close attention to what your healthcare practitioner recommends you do, and make sure you carefully read the dosage instructions. And number 3. If you are ever unsure about whether or not you are taking the right ACE inhibitor, and if there are any side effects, be sure to contact a healthcare professional for help immediately how do ACE inhibitors actually work? Normally in your body, a molecule called angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 in the lungs by angiotensin converting enzyme, also known as ACE. Angiotensin will bind to the ACE receptor, which will undergo a chemical reaction that converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, which then travels to your blood vessels and binds to its own receptors, constricting them and increasing your blood pressure. This mechanism is in place to prevent your blood pressure from dropping too low, but in people who have high blood pressure, it can be used to artificially lower your blood pressure. ACE inhibitors are responsible for blocking the function of angiotensin-converting enzyme, or ACE for short. By blocking the ability of ACE to produce angiotensin-2, it cannot constrict blood vessels, leading to a lower BP. 
This inhibitor functions by binding to the receptor itself, taking up space and preventing the receptor from interacting with angiotensin 1, a process commonly known as competitive inhibition. A good analogy to use is this. Imagine the receptors are chairs which the molecules have to sit on in order to be converted to angiotensin 2. An ACE inhibitor would function similarly to the person shown here in the yellow shirt. They sit on the chair and don't do anything, they prevent other molecules from sitting in the chair, and by doing so the receptor is not able to convert the chemicals and the reaction does not occur. Hopefully these explanations and analogies have helped you understand what the function of ACE inhibitors are, how they affect your blood pressure, and how to visualize the mechanism of action with a real life example. Now that you know some common examples of ACE inhibitors, what they're used to treat, how they work, we should now mention some things to keep in mind before you start taking ACE inhibitors in real life. One of the first things to know about ACE inhibitors is that they may interact with other drugs, also known as drug-drug interactions, so bringing your medications into the clinic is very, very important. For instance, using an ACE inhibitor can increase your blood potassium levels, so taking both an ACE inhibitor and a potassium supplement can lead to elevated potassium levels which can mess with other issues such as your heart's contractile rhythm. Another example of a poor interaction with ACE inhibitors is when using them with a water loss pill, also known as a diuretic. Because ACE inhibitors are already used to lower your blood pressure, using them alongside a diuretic can lead to excessively large drops in blood pressure, which can be very dangerous. As a result, buying a blood pressure machine and frequently checking your blood pressure at home when taking ACE inhibitors is very important to both make sure nothing abnormal is occurring, and the ACE inhibitors are in fact actually lowering your blood pressure. We hope that this educational YouTube video has helped you understand the importance of ACE inhibitors, why they are used, how they work, and what to consider when taking them. If you have any other questions about ACE inhibitors, feel, please feel free to leave a comment or consult the links in the description for more resources about them. Stay happy and be healthy!